right. Um, some Nick Nick Ricada stuff. Let me let me just put this on the screen to set the stage. Nick put out a video, as he does. Actually, he probably didn't put out a video. Alyssa Clips put out a video, but I watched it. And it was a video about how I think the title of it was the law tubers are the worst people. And he went over how in his law tuber sphere, he, um, there are no trustworthy people and only he is trustworthy and maybe like three or four other people in total that he can think of off the top of his head are trustworthy. And it takes him 11 minutes. If I remember correctly, I think it was 11 minutes. And he meanders through this talking point about how he is a good person and his streams are legit. And his sort of like his immense value to the world is underappreciated. Because he goes on to say, and I need to think of a name for this. So I would like you guys, when I'm done explaining it, to help me think of a name. But he falls into a trap that I've noticed a lot of people who have threads on the forum fall into when they have like a narcissistic personality type and when their success doesn't match the volume of their ego, they fall back on this comparison to other people in their field to self aggrandize. So he goes off by saying, sure, I don't do the trial coverage as well as some people. Sure, my predictions aren't as accurate as some other lawyers. Sure, I don't have the courtroom experience or the legal practice experience as some other law tubers. And sure, I may not be as charismatic and as sober as some law tubers. However, when you tune into me, you know that you're getting a true, raw, authentic, genuine opinion. Unlike those other law tubers, who have to say what their audience wants to hear. I give it to you straight, the, the straight dope from, from my own brain and nobody else's opinion infects mine. And it's like a, um, it's a thing that I've noticed, like Chris did it like, sure. I'm not the best artist in the world, but when you, when you buy my comics, when you read my comics, when you buy my medallions, they're genuine, they're, they're authentic. And then DSP does the thing where it's like, you know, I'm a video game reviewer and sure I'm not as good as those other video game reviewers and I'm not as successful as those other reviewers, but you watch me play the game from beginning to end and only after a complete playthrough of this game do I give my opinion. So you know that my opinion of the game is not paid for, not bought, not sold. It's just my opinion from actually playing the game because I'm genuine and I'm authentic and I'm real. And Rakita does this too, where it's like, sure, he, he's trying to compare himself. He's trying to explain a, uh, a dissonance between how unique and special he, he believes he is and the reality of how he's treated by other people and by his general level of success compared to other people. So he'll point out and say, my opinions are my opinions. And it may not be for everybody, but you at least know that it's like you need, like it's a genuine thing when you listen to me. Um, so I'm now reading chat and then soliloquying. Tell me, what do you think that this should be called? Cause, uh, I like, I like coming up with little, uh, idionyms for, for things like this. Copium. <laughs> DSP streams are meaningful. Legitimacy. Someone used like a like argument of authenticness or something. Cope is a fun one. Burnout syndrome. Not like other faggots. Irritable bottle syndrome. Exceptionalizing cope spiral. Cope spiraling. Yeah, I don't know. It's a it's a thing that I. It's happened enough with enough people that I now see it as a trend, and um. Tune into Nick's stream for five seconds, and he was talking about being gangbanged by by neighbors. Fascinating. Appeal to authenticity. Yes, that's a good one. It's like, yeah, my, like bro, most people are authentic. I think when most people get into it, I mean, there are some people who are obviously like grifters, 
But I think people's instinct when they get onto a, a microphone and they start talking is to say what they want to say. Um, I would argue almost everybody is authentic. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Maybe some people pander a little bit. Some people have like a professional persona, but it's just like an excuse for being shitty. Like my genuine, like, I don't know. I feel like I'm kind of genuine, but I realize I could do a lot better at producing my streams if I had the, the time, but my streams are always just like a excuse for, for talking about my, my forum and stuff, as opposed to being a means into the, to the ends themselves. Oh, the other thing is that during this clip, um, he was popping pills and drinking and people were thinking, what the fuck is he doing? Why is he popping pills and drinking? He was also like eating crackers and he was saying that that's like the only thing he eats. He eats like 300 calories of crackers a day. And I'm thinking like, okay, so is he like doing, what the fuck is he doing? And, um, what I, I got banned. I don't know what I'm banned from. Um, it turns out he's doing Modafinil. I've actually taken, taken Modafinil. Um, when I lived in Buffalo, I ordered Modafinil and I, uh, I, tr or I tried it and, um, it, it, it only, it, it worked, but only for one day. The first day I tried it, I felt very alert. And then every other day that I tried it, I did not feel any different. I had, I didn't feel any more alert than usual, but the first day was like really, really productive. And then after that, it was not so, but apparently when you take Modafinil, it, um, exasperates the effects of intoxication. So if you're on an empty stomach and you mix alcohol with it, um, you feel drunker faster. Yeah, it's a new tropic is what it is. It's people describe it like an aspirin version of like Adderall, like something very, very subtle. That's not like addictive in any way. And I, I, I didn't feel it was addictive at all because I didn't feel it after one use. Um, but yeah, apparently it, it, um, makes you feel drunker faster if you take it with alcohol. So people are speculating that he is using Modafinil to, uh, to, to feel, to, to become drunk, with less alcohol, which is interesting. It's interesting to see him mixing pills and, and alcohol together. It also, um, uh, can induce blackouts. So there is speculation on the, uh, Kiwi farms. And when I say Kiwi farms, you have to spell farms like pharmaceuticals because now everyone's bringing out their chemistry hats and, and talking about the, the complications of mixing a nootropic with alcohol. And they believe that because Ricada keeps talking about how he's a narcoleptic and how he blacks out and doesn't remember entire days, apparently. Um, it's speculated that these blackouts might be a reaction of how he's mixing modafinil and, and alcohol together. And he's not actually narcoleptic. He just has, uh, he's just having a, a complication of, of his lifestyle. So there you go. That is, uh, the current Ricada update. Very fascinating chat. Very fascinating. Yeah. It is interesting how he wasn't narcoleptic until he started drinking, um, and taking Modafinil together. It's just a coincidence though. I mean, honestly, what, what do, what does, uh, the Dr. Karen of the Kara Pharma of Karen Pharmaceuticals know about modafinil and alcohol. We can only speculate. How many let he who has not mixed modafinil and alcohol cast the first stone chat? Thank you for watching this clip. This is the CACA Lofa. Remember to like and subscribe.